Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you where you're going to place your electrodes in order to record a proper 12 lead EKG. Where you're going to put those on your patient and how to make sure they're in the right spot before you go ahead and hit print. We're going to get started right now. Hey, whether you've seen some of my other videos or this is your first time on my channel, thanks for stopping by. Please hit subscribe, hit that little bell notification so that you always get an email every time I upload a new video. And at the end, if you like this video, please give it a nice thumbs up. So what we're going to be doing today is showing you where electrodes should be placed on your patient in order to make sure that they're in the right place so that you get an accurate 12 lead EKG. So using one of these electrodes and our skeleton here, I wanna show you where you're gonna place these before we get to our real patient. So, as you can see here, we've got the, the sternum. The body of the sternum is this lower part with the xiphoid process sticking out at the bottom. And the top part, the top couple of inches, is called the manubrium. And here, as you can see, there's a small little angle or a ridge called the sternal angle. And the sternal angle uh, is what we're going to be filling for on our patient. So as we fill that sternal ridge, that sternal angle, we're going to go off to the side of that and notice that we're right on ribs 2. So the, the first rib is up high under the clavicles. Uh, this is rib number two. The inner space just below it is the second intercostal space. Then we've got the third rib, third intercostal space, fourth rib, fourth intercostal space. So this is what we're palpating for on our patient to decide where we're going to place V1 and V2. So sternal angle, ribs two, fourth intercostal space, V1, V2. Then we're gonna go down into fifth intercostal space out to the mid-clavicular line, place V4, place V3 between the two, and stay in this fifth intercostal space, or at least the same horizontal plane, to go to V5 in the anterior axillary line, V6 in the mid-axillary line under the patient's armpit. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that now on a real patient. So when you're recording your EKG, you're going to be using these little electrodes. Okay, we don't call these leads, these are electrodes. So we place the electrodes on the patient's skin and uh, then your EKG lead is going to clip on. The type of uh, EKG machine that I have has a clip, that, a little alligator clip that clips right onto these little tabs. As you can see, there is a sticky part to this and a part that's not sticky and the alligator clip clips right on there. And so there are other kinds of electrodes that are button snap-on or some that, uh, different types of alligator clips. So let's go ahead and I'll show you where you would place this on an actual patient. All right, so if your patient is overly hairy, which our patient today is not. Um, you might need to shave patches uh, once you identify the locations of where you're going to place your electrodes. Uh, but uh, like I had demonstrated on our skeleton, we want to find the fourth intercostal space. So as we're doing this on a patient, we want to first find their, their sternum, body of the sternum here, manubrium at the top, and we want to find that sternal ridge. Okay, that exists between the manubrium and the body of the sternum. And once you feel that, off to the side, you're going to find ribs at that same level. And once you find that rib, that's the second rib, and this inner space just below it is the second intercostal space. And remember, we want V1 and V2 electrodes to be in the fourth intercostal space. So we're going to slide down even further, find that third rib, third intercostal space, fourth rib, and then the fourth intercostal space right there. So right along the sternum on the left and the right sternal border in the fourth intercostal space is where we want to place our V1 and V2 electrodes. I like to have the tab that our uh, lead is going to clip onto facing down because that tends to uh, make it easier to grab onto uh, when I have my, my wires coming in from below. So I'll have V1 and V2, fourth intercostal space along the right and the left intercostal border. Now for, I, I usually skip ahead now to V4. And so V4, we, we're, here's fourth intercostal space. I'm gonna go down one rib space into the fifth intercostal space. I'm gonna follow that out, fifth intercostal space here into the mid clavicular line. So V4 should be in the mid-clavicular line in the fifth intercostal space. That is going to be V4. 
It's a little lateral, so I'm going to move it here, mid-clavicular line, fifth intercostal space, V4. And then V3 is easy because it's just right in the middle of V2 and V4. Don't have to worry about inner spaces, just right between the two on that line. That's V3. And then for V5, we're going to continue to follow that fifth intercostal space out. It should be in the same horizontal uh, line as V4 and uh, to the anterior axillary line, right where the patient's body starts to drop off down towards the table. So we're going to place V5 there. That's our first of the lateral precordial leads, uh, electrodes. And then we're going to go with V6 is in that same intercostal space, same horizontal plane out here, but in the mid axillary line. Oftentimes I see these placed too high. We really want that down here in the mid axillary line right underneath the patient's armpit uh, because these two leads when we're looking at it on our 12 lead are going to give us that lateral view of the lateral wall of the heart. So make sure those are where they're supposed to be. Anterior axillary line, mid axillary line, V5, V6. So now we have our six precordial leads, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. Now, notice we've got four electrodes left over. These are our limb leads. And so we want to place two limb leads on the upper extremities and two limb leads on the lower extremities. For the upper extremities, we want to make sure that we're actually on the extremities. Oftentimes in the ICU, I would see these being placed you know, more on the chest wall than anything, but we want these to be placed somewhere on the extremity. So oftentimes just down here on the bicep, or I oftentimes will go down onto the patient's forearm actually. Make sure it's somewhere on the limb, not on the chest wall. So we'll place those electrodes. Uh, right arm, left arm, and then we would do the same with the lower extremities. So with the lower extremities, again, we do want them to be on the limb um, because your patient's normally going to be wearing pants. You want to make sure that uh, you usually are going to do it down in the lower part of the extremities. I will oftentimes have the tab facing back up rather than down because my wires are going to be coming down to that area. So I place these down sometimes on the, the anterior shins. Uh, you can place them on thighs or knees, but make sure you don't place them on uh, abdomen and call it limb leads. Make sure it's truly on the patient's limbs. All right, so once you've got all your electrodes placed, you pull the, the leads up. As you can see, I've got, these are my precordial uh, wires and I've got my limb wires here that are going to be able to allow the machine to calculate our leads for our 12 leads. Um, on this machine uh, it labels each one of them. This is V3 and each one of them will be labeled the, the respective number and you just need to make sure you correct, connect them to the correct electrode that you've placed. So I'm going to, I like to have the, the wires kind of resting here on the patient's body, uh, keeping them stable, and then you can reposition the wires as needed so that it's not pulling on the electrode. So I'm going to place, this one's V1, just clips right here onto the little tab. Here's V3. So I'm going to try to keep these organized rather than too tangled up. V2. Here's V4. And notice it's peeling off, so then that's when you want to uh, use your wires to your advantage to try to help hold things up on the chest, and sometimes you might even need to pull out a little bit of paper tape or something like that to help hold it in place. Because you're not going to be able to hold it in place while it's running or it's going to pick up electrical activity from you. So you're going to do V5 and then clip on V6 as well. So sometimes it might require some tape to help hold everything in place. Maybe put a piece of tape here on the patient's skin uh, to help hold those, those uh, cables in place while it records the EKG. And you would do the exact same thing with your limb leads, right arm to right arm, left arm to left arm, and same with the lower extremities clipping onto those electrodes. Once you've got it all hooked up, you're gonna stand back from your patient have them just breathe normally and hold nice and still while you go ahead and hit record and it'll print off your 12 lead EKG or a rhythm strip depending on what you are trying to record. All right, well, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please post those below in the comments. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe, hit like, follow along. Thanks for watching.